excited to be here with you this morning. I've uh, been watching the charts for a very long time and I really am looking forward to sharing with you uh, a number of the things I've observed so that hopefully they can help you to trade with the trend and uh, stay out of trouble and make your profits in the Forex market as well as in other markets. But before we begin, uh, we are going to have the uh, standard uh, discussion of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Uh, first of all, there are no perfect systems. Uh, this is a game of probabilities. It is uh, an interesting uh, marketplace uh, with some days wild volatility and other days uh, the uh, situation is that it's flat as a pancake. And so you never know quite what to expect from any of the markets. Uh, yesterday was another day of a wild, uh, wild ride on the roller coaster in the in the equities market, down three percent again, 400 and some points on the Dow. We'll take a look at that, but you really want to be prepared. You do not want to be trading with any money that you uh, can't afford to lose. Uh, but at the same point, uh, if you pay attention and you attempt to stay with the trend and try not to uh, try not to uh, commit uh, stupid mistakes that you'll kick yourself about later. It can be a rewarding opportunity and experience. So having seen the disclaimer on the screen uh, and having warned you about the risks involved in trading, we'll move on and have some fun for the next hour or so. Uh, in the Forex Fortune Hunter trading room, and in, in all the work that we do, we're really always in search of a trend. Uh, when the market is consolidating, chopping around, uh, you have to be able to recognize it. and You have to be able to try to stay away from that kind of a market opportunity. And so what we're really trying to do is build a template of a variety of indicators that help us understand when a trend is likely to shift and change move in the opposite direction, when it's likely to uh, uh, continue to uh, propel itself either upward or downward. And we're trying to figure out also how to measure what kinds of uh, advances or declines are likely to take place. Now Fibonacci is the topic for this morning and I thought it'd be really uh, fun to discuss that with you and talk about it as I've been interested in that for some number of years now, but it does not change our basic strategy and that's a really important point to make right off the bat. Fibonacci is simply a measurement tool. Uh, I don't really use it for entries or exits. Uh, I, I'm trying my best to use it to see what is most likely to happen next, getting back to that issue of probabilities. Uh, we really focus in our trading on combining our charting uh, with the fundamental economic announcements and the interest rate decisions that really drive all the currency markets. Interestingly enough, as I began to, uh, as I continued to try to work on my indicators and my templates, I did find that they had a nice uh, carryover into e-mini futures, and we'll talk about that a little bit this morning. Uh, also, in terms of stocks and bonds and other instruments, including options, really. And I think if you uh, if you observe uh, in the next hour or so some of the indicators we're using, you can try to uh, carry them over into your work, either in TradeStation or Ninja or any of the other platforms. This morning we'll be talking primarily about MetaTrader, which is the standard uh, brokerage uh, platform for uh, the Forex currency markets. Now, all markets uh, really work with a natural wave motion, okay? We're in a situation uh, where uh, the, the market is, is never really standing still. Even if it's chopping about, it's, it's moving uh, up and down. And really what we're trying to do is capture uh, the best trade entry point in a natural wave of the market motion. In this particular chart, uh, just as a very basic graphic, we'll be talking a lot about an A to B swing. Uh, this particular line suggests that there may have been some resistance and support areas which were in the way of this move to the downside. Once that support is taken out, 
And then we have resistance to the upside, whether it's at the base of this particular line or perhaps a little higher. What we're looking for in terms of our trading, no matter what instrument it is, is for that position called C, which is the pullback in the trend that allows you to optimize your entry and reduce your risk. And the reason you've reduced your risk is because that as opposed to buy, uh, selling, uh, for example, in this downtrend when you're at B, we have uh, waited for the pullback and we know that when we switch or take out the resistance to the north here, that's where our problem will exist for a turnaround and, and, and a, a, instead of moving down to the D extension. And so our risk is minimized by trying to wait for that pullback because we know we'd like to get out in this area here and it's sure a lot closer in than it would be down here at the B point. Okay, so the natural wave motion is what we're looking for. Now, this obviously can be reversed. I simply didn't take time to put an upwards uh, leaning chart. We'll see plenty of opportunities to uh, view how it works in the reverse uh, as we get into our chart motions, okay? Um, there are three major events that take place in my indicators that uh, create an opportunity to uh, define either a buy or a sell zone. And I want to start at the beginning here because the 4x, once again, as a measurement tool, is going to be an add-on. It's going to help us to understand where the market is likely to go next, uh, uh, whether on the upside or the downside. But first of all, we have to have some kind of a pattern in place that we can use for our basic understanding of trend. Um, there are three indicators we use. Uh, the medallion is one, and it's called a medallion simply because a, 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 a sign prints on the chart when there is a twist of the 12 and the 24 uh, EMA, exponential moving averages, uh, for those who are just beginning. The 12 would be uh, the, the average of the last 12 closes, let's say, and the 24 would be a slightly longer term uh, moving average indicator that would be uh, indicating a cross, would be indicating a change in potential trend. And there's another indicator we use uh, called the chandelier. And the chandelier simply is, uh, is one of those lines, like we saw in the previous chart right here, that suggests either support that's been broken or resistance that's held, okay? And so uh, that's the second event that will take place, a switch, a breach in the chandelier. And then the 24 crossing a 38 period, what's called a T3 Tilson, and you'll see it in a minute. I'll describe all of these and I'll answer questions as we go along or towards the end of the hour together so that you have access to all of this information and these indicators, no problem. Uh, but these are the three major events just to set the stage for what's coming next. When they take place, we draw a vertical line to note that we're uh, either in a, uh, we're either in a, uh, a buy zone or a sell zone. Okay, now once again, these are exponential moving averages. You can play around with all your values and different, uh, uh, different uh, types of moving averages for sure. This is what I've come up with in terms of optimizing for myself over the years. Uh, the chandelier is one uh, that can be found elsewhere and uh, I'll explain about that a little bit later, but we'll try to keep going so as to get to uh, Fibonacci as, as promptly as possible. And this will also become clear, all right? Now, once, once again, once we are in our buy or sell zone, then we're going to wait for that pullback to give us the optimal level uh, entry and reduce our risk, okay? Now, this Fortune 100 template really is pretty helpful because it can uh, move from one minute charts and scalps all the way out to 30 minute charts, even four hour and daily charts. Those are the stock and trade of MetaTrader. Uh, and really it, it revolves pretty nicely around all currency pairs, even though some are more volatile than others. So for example, uh, if you were trading the Euro and the New Zealand uh, Kiwi, uh, that would move much more rapidly 
uh, and uh, with greater volatility than you would if you were trading the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, which uh, you probably would want to move out to 15 or 30 minutes in order to really have something useful to work with in terms of the number of pips that you get. Now, also in Forex, we're trading uh, pips, which are a measure of the uh, change in the currency pricing. And uh, because there's a lot of leverage in currencies, uh, pips are like one one hundredth of a penny. Okay, so now let's see the template in action, okay, because we want to get right to the good stuff here. Uh, and I'll describe it, but I did want to share some slides with you. Okay, so now uh, we'll get rid of this. These alerts that occur in MetaTrader are simply telling us there's action happening in another chart. And uh, what we'll do now is to take a look at that Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar because some interesting things have happened. Uh, here is our template. And in fact, what we'd start with with our multiple moving averages, here uh, would be our 12 EMA up to a 24 EMA. A lot of action now that the market's beginning to heat up at 930. Um, we see that this particular uh, line here, the white line is called the chandelier, and as you can see, when the price broke down through that support level, which it did not do back over in this area here, we see a situation where now the breach has occurred and the chandelier shifts from white to red and now becomes a measure of resistance to the upside rather than support to the downside. Okay, so now we have one chandelier multiple moving averages. Note that when this blue medallion appears, that means a twist to, to the downside, a white medallion, a twist to the upside. And you can see here that what we also have is a T3 tilts in this line, and I'll make it a little bigger so that you can see it more clearly. MetaTrader is uh, pretty easy to modify your indicators and make things move. So there's our T3 Tilson, which is simply a smooth moving average I've set to 38. Um, and so once we have these uh, three things in place, and I, I didn't pick this because I make me look smart. I'm just putting it together so you can see we draw our yellow line, and we see that everything to this side, we're in a cell zone. Okay, so uh, this is uh, this is how we do it. We make a, a small mark and and just kind of say, okay, over this way, we're we're going to be in the cell zone, and then we wait for a pullback into the bands, and that's our opportunity uh, to uh, to go short on this particular uh, currency pair, odd versus the U.S. dollar. Now down at the bottom, just so you know. Uh, now we start the U.S. session, okay? Uh, down at the bottom, we have a situation where we're uh, where we're looking at three oscillators. I use an MACD, a stochastic, and uh, an RSI. I can share settings on these later on, no problem. But notice that what we've got uh, in our MACD are some pullback histogram bars, the green separated from the red. Uh, we have a pullback of sorts on the stochastic, but we're never able to move across a 45-55 range in the RSI. So this is definitely still a downward-looking market. And you can see in this particular case on a 15-minute chart that from this entry point, which was that bearish candlestick, we had a move of 43 pips to the down just in that particular area over the next uh, basically 30 minutes or so. Another pullback into the bands, and you can see the natural wave motion as we move further south. Okay, so that's the basic uh, uh, situation. Let's take a look uh, because the euro has been as the uh, market's been melting down. Let's look at this in reverse just to get an idea. Uh, this uh, particular indicator now is set to 15 minutes again. Euro USD, as I said, here is a, a session. Uh, from the Asian market starting at 7.30 Eastern Time, U.S., and uh, the 5 o'clock for FXCM, my broker, uh, the rollover time for currencies is 5 in the afternoon when interest rate differentials would be assessed if there were any. Uh, we see that we had a move higher on the euro uh, into the Asian session. Uh, the blue line represents London and uh, the London Open at uh, 3 a.m. East Coast for me and 8 o'clock in the morning over there in, in the UK. And so here was this situation. And notice again 
we have a similar uh, kind of an opportunity. Forget about the red line for just a minute. Here was uh, here was our uh, medallion. I don't know what happened to my chandelier. Let me add it. I go to my custom indicators here and add that in. And we change the color here. Sorry about that for the delay. <clears throat> Here's our uh, chandelier indicator, and I'm going to make it bigger as well. Dropped out of my template for some reason here. Okay, so anyway, notice that here was the breach of the chandelier to the upside. We're kind of waiting. There was an original pullback here in this area, but we're going to wait until our blue EMA uh, 24 crosses the T3 Tilson again. And sure enough, it, another trick you can use is if, uh, although we see a pullback here towards the bands, in the 15-minute chart, you may have to because the Asian session isn't quite as active as, as some of the others. You might have to drop back, and we'll share the five-minute chart here. And you can see here, when we look at a five-minute view, you can see the clear pullback into the bands, the, the yellow histogram bars, and so forth, and into the Asian session. When Hong Kong opens up, we have a nice move to the north, continuing on, and we never get into any trouble at all until we have a little break in the action here at the opening of the London session. So that's how the that's how the uh, uh, Forex Fortune 100 template works. And now what we'd like to do is see if we can uh, figure out how to add. Uh, some additional uh, indicators and get to our Fibonacci kinds of levels, all right? Let me just uh, quickly reset our slides here. I think we're on number seven, so I'll fix that up. I'm going to set up the show and change to a seven point so you don't have to see me flipping through them. And we'll get over here, and we'll be back. So we see the template in action, okay? Now about Fibonacci's. Let's get to the meat of it, okay? Who, what, and why? Well, Leonardo Bonacci was an Italian mathemati mathematician, not even from the Renaissance period, but from the Middle Ages. He published a book, probably on stone tablets, um, 1200 AD, right smack dab in the middle of the Middle Ages. Uh, the hordes from Asia steppes hadn't even gotten out of Italy at that point. He was probably holed up in a cave somewhere. But he came up with a number sequence that included a variety of key ratios. Now, others have been identified as having seen this as well, but bottom line is uh, that uh, bottom line is that we have a situation where this number sequence has a variety of, uh, of uh, impacts and occurrences in nature. Uh, there, are, there are facts, if you look into it uh, and research it further, there are uh, opportunities to say that the number of queen bees in a beehive, if divided by the number sequence, equals the number of worker bees, and so on and so forth. We obviously are going to get into that today. And like Stonehenge, who knows, who knows how they uh, put the pillars of rock in the ground in the UK uh, for Stonehenge. We don't know. We don't care. What we do know is that these have been seen to be useful for identifying support and resistance when trading currency pairs. And that's what we're going to be about today. The sequence is pretty simple. It is uh, uh, integers where the sum of the two previous integers lead to the next number in the sequence. So, for example, 0 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and so on. Now, in addition to the sequence itself, the ratios that occur, uh, in particular what's called the golden ratio, 1.618, or, or its inverse, which is just 0 0.618, also uh, come into play. And basically, if you read in uh, investopedia.com, as you see at the bottom of my slide, uh, you'll have more background on it. But bottom line is, if you were to divide, uh, and I don't want to stop the slides and get the calculator out here, but if you were to divide uh, 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 13 by 8, you would end up with approximately 1.618. And you can do that throughout the number sequence. and uh, research that on your own time. Some of the other ratios that are used as a result of the sequence include 0 0.23, 0 0.76, 0 0.38, and of course just 0 0.5 or half. And you'll see why that's important in a few as well. Okay, now how do we apply the FIBS? 
Well, think back to the chart that I used uh, for you before uh, with the A to B uh, uh, thrust, either to the upside or the downside. We try to identify a price push or a decline. That becomes our A to B baseline. We use the FIB drawing tools to measure that A to B uh, notion. Okay, and then we uh, retrace the lines automatically. They are added by our drawing tool in MetaTrader and it also in, in TradeStation or Ninja, I'm sure. Uh, and then we try to combine that with our Fortune 100 indicators. Okay, so how do I modify or customize the levels? That's something we'll discuss uh, when we view the MetaTrader slides again, and which levels are more important. Those are the things that we want to think about next. Okay, so uh, let me uh, stop this uh, slideshow again, and let's quickly move and see if we can figure out how to uh, add some Fibonacci levels to our work right now. I'm going to pull up now the US uh, JPY 30-minute chart. And in fact, uh, what I have here is a, a kind of a bare naked uh, template. I've only included the chandelier, which is that indicator sharing support and resistance. And you can notice right here, I'm not making anything up as we go, we could move back at a random level. Bottom line is, uh, anywhere we go here, uh, we would find ourselves uh, with an opportunity for the thrust. But, what I like to try to do, and the reason the chandelier is here, it's as kind of a simple trick to, to say when you get a break in the chandelier, we'll use that as your opportunity to set your, what I call the poor man's Fibonacci, which is our A to B extension right here. We'll move this over a bit, A to B, and then back potentially to C. And that would have been the way you'd create it without any Fibonacci's at all. Notice that at this point on our pullback, the, sh the, the uh, chandelier resistance indicator is holding nicely for us. We attempted to get through it a couple of times. The bulls, those who are buying the dollar, the dollar bulls trying to push the dollar higher here, actually have a wick on their candle trying to get through the chandelier and fail. And it's at the point where we take out the lows here that we really begin to move to the downside, okay? And uh, what we would call our D extension, which would be sometime, someplace down in this range. And you can notice also that it fell off rather dramatically as we moved here. So let's, uh, let's uh, try uh, this again. I'm going to get rid of the letters just for a second, and we'll begin to apply our Fibonacci levels. Okay, here's our series of drawing tools over here. I happen to have them on the left-hand column of my chart. You can put them anywhere you'd like. We click on Fibonacci retracement. We move here, click, come down, click. And you can see here that uh, from the A to the B, pull back almost dramatically right into the bands between the 38 ratio, which I was telling you about before, and the 61.8, which is the inverse of that, uh, that golden ratio, okay? And you can see that here we toyed with this level, but we never were able to break the chandelier, and as a result of that, we were on, on this downward path. In this particular case, I'll move over here so you can see it a little more clearly. Notice that this is the 127. This is where we stopped first. And then the 1618, the golden rule, down in this area was a touch and a pull, and then a continuation. Because as you know, uh, yesterday was pretty ugly in the market, uh, and uh, things were on a tear. The dollar got crushed, the stock market got crushed, and so on and so forth. So a little bit out of the ordinary, but still helpful to us in terms of plotting a strategy for moving forward. Okay, so that's the situation on a 30-minute kind of a swing trade chart. And you can, in fact, move out to, say, a four-hour. Let's see if we can find something in this area as well. Let's see if we were to uh, take a look here. Uh, these ratios, obviously, with the huge fall-off that we had, this is a two-week, uh, a, a one-week, sorry, one-week between the lines uh, time period on a four-hour chart. But you can see also that we've had a pullback now into the bands. And let's just see if we can figure out whether that represented something that was of interest to us. We go all the way from the high of the range to the low. And uh, 
I, I really did not pull this up beforehand, and I've got a couple of charts actually I picked, I took pictures of last night, so you wouldn't think I was just making it up all the time. Is uh, Carolyn Borden says you can't make this up. Uh, 61.8 pullback on this range that occurred over a period of three weeks. So in fact, your Fibonacci's and your chandelier can be reasonably helpful to you in all time frames. Uh, uh, down to the one minute chart that we'll study in a few more minutes. Okay. Now, uh, now we can uh, begin to uh, uh, focus in a, on a couple of other things. Let's see if we've got any other examples just to show what's happening here. Here would be a, a, a notion where we tried to come down, okay, we tried to come down, couldn't do it, reversed course, and this is one of those places, as I told you, where when the when the uh, 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 chandelier is broken, we know we may be in for trouble. In other words, in this particular case, as opposed to pulling back and then going down this way, all right, I'm going to make this not a ray, <clears throat> as opposed to, uh, you know, the move down, back up, and then down to the D extension here, what we find is that we've had a breach in the chandelier and, and in fact, a move to the upside here. So the, uh, the point is that in, in conjunction with Fibonacci, we have an opportunity to use our chandelier and our uh, whole Fortune Hunter template uh, to try to help us uh, guess the direction of the trend, and obviously that's what we're interested in. Here's our Fibonacci. And uh, in particular, if we draw to the bottom of that line, once again, using this as, a, as a, uh, uh, an opportunity to check ourselves with a cross of the chandelier, notice that what we did, in fact, was to reverse direction and go up to the 1618. And as I will show you in the next uh, couple of frames, we have an opportunity outside of our A to B lines, which were right here. I'll draw them bigger so that we can see them more clearly. That was A. <clears throat> this was B. Notice that above here, we have an opportunity for 127, 1618, maybe twice the level that uh, has been created, or to the downside, 127, 1618, and 200. Okay, now let's pull out that Fibonacci tool and let's just play around with it a little bit to see what the levels look like. I'm going to right click on it. You go to Fib Properties if you're in MetaTrader and you can see displayed here are some of the levels where the lines are held. And just as a quick tip for people, if you were to uh, add a description and that's the 38.2, you can see that I've written 38.2 over here. I'm going to use a bigger chart in just a second to uh, display this more clearly. Notice that the 50 is next. Notice that the 61.8 is here in the description. And then you simply add the values here. Well, what we talk about in our room is how to do this and what the specific numbers are. And obviously happy to help anybody off, offline that's interested in more details about this. But just to give you the general idea. So here's 100%. That's one and uh, here was zero. So this is our A to B swing, and in the middle are these lines right here. And in MetaTrader, unfortunately, I can't show you uh, those in a different color. All of these lines have to be the same color, but in any event, you see the idea. Now, if we were to go on further, you can see that I've added here the 1618 extension down to the 200 extension, and then those are negative numbers, and then the reverse is true, the positives, just the same things, will show so that we end up having on the bottom our extensions. In case this had turned and gone downward, we have our D. And in this particular case, it headed higher, and so we have our D to the north. So that's how the MetaTrader thing works. And once again, that's a little on the, on the technical uh, NITS side of things, but I wanted to show you that it's possible to manipulate this. Some people, uh, for example, will have a 76 line in here and a 23 line. I just prefer to put uh, the middle part together for myself and just have the bands here because I'm more interested in what happens after uh, we have uh, a decision about what's going to happen next.
Okay, how can I get access to the chandelier indicator in any of Tom's parameters? Okay, uh, John, I'll be happy to uh, uh, to uh, work on that uh, at the end of the hour, kind of in our Q&A period. I'll put some numbers in the chat box and also can be reached offline should you wish to have that happen. But let me uh, just take a quick uh, break here before we go back to the uh, back to the slides and share with you that uh, if we were, uh, let's see, I want to bring up uh, one of my uh, web charts. And I'm going to go here. Uh, if you are involved in looking for new indicators, especially revolving around MetaTrader, uh, in, our, in our work, we really focus a lot on fundamental announcements and interest rates and so forth. So forexfactory.com becomes a very important part of our work. The Forex calendar is published for each week. You get future news and so forth. And so, for example, I wanted to remind you about this anyway. Keep in mind, traders, that Friday this week, even though it's before Labor Day, is the first Friday in September. And so and not only will we have some big numbers from Canada, but we will also have the non-farm payroll on Friday morning at 8.30. So beware, uh, whether your currencies or futures, uh, that will be a big announcement given all the volatility in the markets as to whether the Fed in its September 16th meeting is going to think about raising or lowering interest rates. And so uh, that's an important thing. Now, the other part of Forex Factory that's uh, really cool are the forums. That's this tab right over here. And you can go to those forums, and you can go to trading systems, and you can simply put, for example, chandelier in the search box. You could search on chandelier if it doesn't come with your version of MetaTrader, and here's a whole bunch of opportunities. And I, this is a fellow that wanted help with a chandelier alert. And you can see here, you could download that indicator and install it in MetaTrader, no trouble at all, all for free. So Forex Factory is extremely helpful, and I bring that to your attention so that you can uh, see how uh, additional indicators could be accessed uh, if you're working on your own. Okay? I hope that helps a little bit. And, um, and in fact, now what I'd like to do is to come back and check our slides one more time here. Because <clears throat> I wanted to tell you the next uh, level of information that we have about this. And I have to uh, uh, slideshow. I want to set it up. And I am now on, I believe, slide 13 we want to go to. <clears throat> All right slideshow and we're going to view our show again okay so now uh, let me back up I, apparently one more I missed here let's see what we got going on uh, come on okay why can't it go back for me please go back further what, oh I see it doesn't want to go further than I just had told you uh, the previous slide uh, which I uh, can't apparently, I've tricked myself into putting up, says uh, my personal breakthrough in Forex uh, Fibonacci traded was uh, figuring out that there's something called a tipping point. Now what is it? In the middle of the range, in that area of the bands that I have between the A and the B, uh, where you get your pullbacks and your retracements, that 38, 38 to 0.618 range, what I've discovered over the last 10 years is that the jury is still out on trend direction at that point. Just because you have a pullback doesn't mean that you're going to then accelerate, let's say if you're in a downtrend, accelerate down to the D extension on the downside. It's possible that the bulls take control and you end up go, going in the other direction. Okay. Once again, what, what I've tried to do in the room and on my own is to use the chandelier for some guidance on that. We saw already in that USJPY area where the chandelier held, and as a result, we did get a fulfillment down to the D on the south side of the range. The Fibonacci extensions can be used in either direction. You saw that I had them both on my chart automatically printed. And at this point, though, the market can go either way. Now, we saw the natural wave motion before, right? A to B, breaking through resistance. And the last time we said, oh, there's our hold, and now we're headed down to D somewhere down here. But in fact, often what happens is 
that was all she wrote was down here. And this pullback gets to the mid part of the range and then it breaks resistance and in fact turns around and heads the other way. And in this particular case, and I'll say this a couple of times during the presentation, oftentimes what you'll get up here is not necessarily the 1618, you will get as far as the 1.27. And we'll see that in action in just a few minutes, okay? But this is what I call the tipping point. Once the market has shown its hand, the probabilities on trend direction increase dramatically. And you go from, you know, 50-50, it's a coin flip, it could go either way, or maybe 60-40, it'll stay in the direction of the current trend. You go to a 70-30 kind of a probability. And so once that has happened, then we can begin to think about our next step. Where's our entry? Where's our exit? What should our stop loss be? What's our risk management? Uh, what's a potential uh, profit target? And we can uh, then consider FIB extensions as our measurement tool to get there. Okay. Uh, let's begin uh, on our FIB analysis again with nothing much, which is that uh, 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 Forex uh, template that only includes the chandelier. And then we'll get to the USDJPY uh, and uh, a couple of the other pairs just to show some things that are going on. And then we will definitely turn our attention uh, to, the, uh, to the wider market and the market in action right now. Okay. So, back we go, and what we'd like to do now is to take a look at something of this sort. Now, we, one of the things we'd like to present to you is that it's possible that this motion, this downward motion, really won't amount to much. So, let's say that we had our fibs running, as we thought, from A to B, A to B, a pullback into the bands, and then a move downward. Well, now this one was healthy. It was a 1.27 extension. It never really got here. It certainly never got back down to where we were before, where we drew our dotted line, okay? And in fact, we begin to see some indications that this thing is likely to move in the other direction. What we see are some wicks on the bottom, some buying influence coming in right at this reasonably interesting uh, 127 extension. Uh, we saw also, too, and sometimes other, other traders will teach that when you get to the 76, which is above our 618 here, you're not likely to go all the way down to the bottom. You're likely to stop at the 127. Um, I use my chandelier and I don't pay much attention to it, but please feel free to think that through as well. If we were to add a 76 retracement line, 0.76 retracement line right on here, that would suggest that the downturn isn't going to be as dramatic simply because the bulls have gotten closer to the beginning point, right? That's really what the fact of the matter is. So now we've come down, we're here, but as opposed to reversing direction and heading back down at the chandelier in this direction here, right down to our 200 or something. In fact, we break the chandelier. We can see a couple of times here when this has been tested and now, in fact, it's broken. And the reason for this is, as you recall that last chart, you can see that when this breaks, our likely target is either the 127 or the 1618. And you can see that we went right here as soon as that was done. We came back and tested it again. We even came back into the bands. And now, in fact, we have an opportunity to either leave our chart on like this and just see where it goes next, or my, my advice usually is simply get rid of it. It's already fulfilled what it was trying to achieve. Now it's time to reverse direction ourselves and go the other way from A to B, a pull back into the bands, and sure enough, right back up here to the 1618 before all the craziness of the market that's occurred in the 30th of July and so forth. This was an, under more normal conditions. And in fact, before uh, we moved into uh, this area on the, on the chart, uh, which was in the late part of a U.S. session, we had to move up to the 200 and perhaps beyond because here obviously is a big wick as things got really crazy. Okay, so that just shows that you can reverse direction, and that's that tipping point area. So when you are in the bands, 
the difference in what I'm trying to teach you today versus what you may hear everywhere else is that when you're here, it's not guaranteed that you're going to continue this downward thrust. The possibility exists when you're in this range that you could reverse direction and do this. And in this particular case, we had 27 pips to the upside, and this was just a five-minute chart, US dollar JPY, which isn't as volatile usually. And now we're in a situation where you can also see this reversal of trend uh, through the afternoon session into 5 o'clock, continued reverses here, and just continued volatility of all sorts. Let's test this one right here and see where we are. Whenever you see those A to B thrusts, you can see a pullback to the 50%, which means 50% is halfway between A and B, and then a move not quite to the 1618, but close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, and for sure, another move of significant number of pips, 22 pips, so if you're whacking that out every day, even on a pair as well-behaved as the USJPY, that's uh, the road to riches and our Forex Fortune Hunter approach to things. Then we saw a huge breakout in the downtrend, either another uh, move by China or some else uh, back around the 31st of July, and on we went. So now let's move to a one hour again, just so we can see where we are. Notice what happened during that huge downtrend in the equity markets, the first one. And then, again, just huge, big moves on the U.S. dollar. You want to be careful to be in the trend for sure. Notice that here was a move that we could have uh, predicted uh, from our Fibonacci work. I'll get rid, rid of some of these old ones. <clears throat> delete, delete, delete. And here we are with a thrust through the chandelier, one to two, a pullback to the 38, typically is opposed to way down in this area here, testing the chandelier. This move means the move is quite strong. Look at to the pip, right at the 1618 extension. And so uh, as you play with these on your own, you'll get a real sense of confidence about how they work and uh, what is uh, likely to happen to you next. Okay, so now we've got uh, uh, 9.59 on the uh, calendar here, 10 o'clock, been 45 minutes. What I'm going to do is take uh, just a quick uh, drink of water, and I'm going to look and see exactly uh, what our question box looks like here, and we'll see if we can respond to some questions. Okay, uh, uh, the first one that I see, uh, first of all, I will take a sip here. Hang on. The first question I have is, what exactly is a chandelier? Uh, great question. Uh, first of all, just to repeat again, if you joined us a little bit late, that on our, uh, on our chart, a chandelier is a mathematical representation of what some smart guy in, uh, at MIT thought was uh, a, a reasonable level of resistance given the price changes that had occurred. Uh, over the past period of time. Uh, so here was a high of the move, and you can see that the chandelier actually began towards the high of this move, and then as it broke through this level of, re uh, of support, it switched from white to red. It was first noted that the high of the move was here, but then as time marched on, and as the average true range of all these candles was logged into the formula, it created a downward path and was flat as nothing more was happening. It dropped a little bit further and then has created this level of resistance at the present moment of time. Uh, I, I did okay in math in college, but that was a very long time ago, so I would definitely not want to try to explain to you any more about the mathematical formula in Chandelier. What I can do that hopefully will be helpful for comparative purposes is I can show you another uh, indicator that you're probably more familiar with that is exactly uh, the uh, same kind of thing. It's called parabolic uh, support and resistance, parabolic SAR. And if we add that to our chart, perhaps you're more familiar with it, uh, you can see that here underneath the price action is a support line. It comes down, it's tested and taken out. 
uh, and then it has to come back up again. You see a pullback even in parabolic SAR as well, even on this one hour chart that we have in front of us, a pullback here and then a reversal and a move higher. You can use parabolic SAR for sure. Uh, I happen to like the uh, chandelier because I think it's very clean and it's helpful to me personally. It takes a little getting used to, but it's easy to install on your on your uh, uh, MetaTrader charts. In TradeStation and Ninja, I don't particularly like the look of the uh, of the uh, uh, chandelier. It kind of the, the line connects here. It isn't as clean. Uh, so you may uh, be discouraged by that and not be interested in using it on, on uh, another platform if you're using TradeStation or Ninja for Forex uh, and or for futures. Uh, but in any event, uh, the, the chandelier is helpful to me and it is, as I said, available to you uh, in that Forex uh, factory forums area. Okay, I don't know about I don't know about eSignal, uh, David. I'm sorry. I, it's been when I first began, like in 2003 or 2004, um, I used eSignal and uh, a, no, a couple of other earlier trading platforms, and that was a while ago, right? I mean, the trading platforms have improved so dramatically since then. But uh, I used eSignal, and uh, I would say it isn't so mat much a matter of eSignal itself. Uh, which is, as I understand it still, and once again, it's been 10 years, but a data feed. But it's more what platform is associated with interpreting that data for you. Uh, that's where you'll get a chance to see whether the chandelier exists. And um, I have not mentioned, but I could, as long as I'm just kind of taking a little break here for a couple, three minutes for Q&A, um, I could also mention that um, in Forex, if you have time to tinker around with it, a couple of the benefits, uh, and there, there are some drawbacks to Forex for sure, but a couple of the benefits are that you can, from any of the brokers, especially still here in the U.S., uh, get a demo account, which includes a free download of this MetaTrader platform you're looking at right now, and it also includes, say, $50,000 of Monopoly money that you can use to trade uh, without having to uh, risk any of your own capital till you get used to it. And what we've done in the room is try to get people set up that way and uh, used to it uh, so that they're able to do this. And the reason for maybe doing that in Forex is simply because you would uh, be interested to uh, be uh, closer to the bank, uh, uh, you know, fulfillments, uh, and closer to, you know, kind of a, a straight and true trade rather than getting hung up in somebody's trading desk in a local brokerage office. So uh, anyway, in any event, um, uh, th the chandelier looks like uh, the PSAR and is a bit similar. Notice that the chandelier here was a little more accurate on a one-hour chart. We went up, we tested it. Now, the jury is still out again on whether we're going to go down or not. But for sure, if you're in the middle here, this could also be uh, considered a no trade range. You know, stay out. It's a chop zone. We talked about that eventually uh, early on. We've come to a point here on USJPY with a one hour chart that today's market looks like it's you know, very kind of choppy and congested. Certainly not the downtrend we had yesterday, but also no huge recovery as we experienced the last uh, time we had that huge down downward trek. We immediately kind of took a chandelier out. We came back and tested it. Right now, you know, yesterday we came down on the dollar trade to about, I don't know, 119 or something of that sort. Uh, and, uh, and now we're just kind of in a chop zone. So that's one that is maybe not one to be traded right now. Although, let's uh, test another theorem here. We'll go to a one-minute chart. I haven't done this for you yet to show you that this is equally uh, possible to use if you just want to sit at your computer for a while and, and uh, do some scalping. <clears throat> I'll just clean this up again here. Uh, notice that on a one-minute chart, we have the same kind of opportunity. Uh, and, and I will show you also a different way to approach this in a second so you don't have to be dependent on the chandelier, but here we go, down we go, fibs to the bottom, A to B, a pull back into the zone, and a move down to the 1618. And if you were to enter the trade in this area, we haven't talked about that either, but this is where you'd want to be. 
right? The 618 pullback, you're at C. You don't have very much risk. There's only three pips of risk above the chandelier. You can, you know, forget about it. It's okay. And to the downside, we had a 19 or 20 pip trade. So we had three pips risk and 20 pips to our 1618 extension. And you can see now, again, that we're not necessarily using this uh, uh, except we're combining it, but what we're doing is to measure what the likely or possible range will be on our trade, okay? Likewise, if we back up over here on a one-minute chart, I don't remember what, why, I, this is a session time, but it's on this oddball chart, so I don't recall it. Let's see about this one. Here was a break in the chandelier, another pullback to the 50%. Look at that. I can't make it up. I, I you know, I didn't look at that before. Right back to the 1618. Okay, so here was this pullback, and then we were off to the races. Notice that we had our RSI, at least, that was cooperating in north of the 55 line. So this is something that you can use in a couple of different instances, and uh, hopefully uh, will be of, of use to you. Um, and we are now in the live market. So let's just uh, let's just double back here a little bit and see where we are with our charts. <clears throat> I wanted to show you a couple of other examples that, uh, in fact, I used last night, and uh, we'll keep on trucking. We have been uh, we have been interested in uh, the uh, uh, the European uh, and Asian markets here. I can't find my euro uh, euro. Oh, here it is. Uh, we've been interested in the uh, odd uh, Australian dollar because of the China situation in our room, and, I, and we don't have time today to talk about all the economic fundamentals and so forth, but uh, uh, in fact, what we have is a situation where Australia has been most impacted by the uh, tremendous slowdown in, in, in loss of prices and commodities, and especially because China's slowing down, and during the heyday when the Australian dollar was much higher than it is today, uh, commodities were king, and they were selling uh, all sorts of commodities into the Chinese market, into their manufacturers. And so now that that's slowed down, there's been great pressure on the odd. And so we watch carefully to see what happens with the uh, uh, with the uh, Australian dollar. And in fact, uh, there were some numbers that came out the other night that suggested that the uh, that uh, that Australians' uh, GDP had dramatically dropped over a quarter over quarter. Now, this isn't necessarily this, the place that that occurred, but it shows you another opportunity. Sometimes, once you're in motion, you can use your Fibonacci's. Uh, separately from just a cross of the chandelier. I'll show you this one. First of all, if I'm going to get rid of these session times, those are confusing the issue. And we have a five o'clock time frame. We're moving into the Asian session. Notice that we have now had uh, a fulfillment of our buy zone. Here's the buy zone. We've crossed up over the, te uh, the uh, T3 Tilson. We have a white medallion, and we're above the chandelier. We're above the MACD. Notice the first pullback is here, and then there's a second pullback here. If you wait until close on the chandelier, especially on a, uh, on a reasonably low-level chart, uh, an early chart like this, it, this will be nervous Nelly and perspiration on your forehead, but if you wait for the close, you see the chandelier was not violated. And in fact, this is the candle that would represent a pretty good entry. It's closed above the 12 EMA, and now our risk from this entry back down is in this case 44 pips, but what we would do is reduce the contract size that we have, and this is a pair that moves like crazy. Okay, so bottom line is we'd be here, and we have a situation where on the upside we had 165 pips to the north. So that's within the range of our four to one. Uh, obviously, on a 15 minute euro odd chart, I'm just showing you this as another example. But uh, we typically would trade a very volatile pair like this on a five or, or a one minute chart so as to reduce our risk even further, okay? Let's take our Fibonacci from this swing low, which was the nervous Nelly swing low to the high. And you can see as we moved along, first we took out our one, two, seven, 
And then right at the close of business, that particular 5 o'clock time frame, here we were right exactly at our 1618. Okay? So that's one instance, another instance to show you about how you can use these numbers. Here is the volatility that's begun to take place based upon uh, the on a 15-minute chart based upon those announcements about uh, Australian economics. Uh, last night, up we went big volatility, which is why I say you want to be very careful about applying anything during a fundamental announcement. I would avoid it actually like the plague and try my best to uh, simply uh, simply uh, stay out. There are other ways to trade fundamental announcements. This buildup to the announcement is where you want to be, where there's a calm and easy pattern, where your bands are separate and where you're uh, clearly moving all your indicators into an upward area. And it isn't until you close below the, T, uh, the EMA 24 that you really had much risk at all. Okay? And even then, we've gone back and tested it a couple or three times. It isn't until over here, again, where we have thought maybe we're going to have a re reduction. But this could also simply be, uh, let's see, let's move our fibs. This could also simply be a pullback in the range. And now here we are, if we take this swing low to this swing high, in this situation where we're testing our 618, maybe we're going to go higher the euro over the odd. Maybe it's simply going to stay in this area until such time as, uh, as there's another announcement or more developments on the economic front. Notice again, as we said, our tipping point, the jury is out when we're in the middle of these bands. The jury is still out. Okay, so now let's even drop down a little further. We'll take a five-minute look at this and get rid of the old fibs that were here. I got rid of the wrong one. Let me try again. <clears throat> Fortune Hunter. Here comes our chandelier. And this was, uh, this was the area that we saw up the wave motion that you see each time, and a move up to the Fibonacci levels that we were looking to see. Okay, on we go, onward and upward. Okay, now let's take a look at some of our live market charts and see if there's anything to be traded. Uh, and in fact, here we are at the beginning of our U.S. session on this five-minute chart. We're in the 10:14 hour, and we have a few minutes to take a look at this. Uh, once again, we have a situation here where our fibs in combination with our uh, work. I think I would probably take this particular, well, we'll take this. You can take any one of the swing highs you want just to see what it compares to. To our first move below, then a pull back into the bands here, and then a reduction down to the 200. If we pull back all the way to the top, I think it would probably be a little more reasonable. Notice that we're right here, and what you can do is just tinker around, grab it, move it, see how it looks, and now we have our chop and, consi uh, and considerations down in this area as the market has dropped off uh, in the London session and now is trying to attempt to decide what to do next. Okay. Uh, parameters the same throughout all time frames. Yes, I do. I actually, uh, I actually uh, I'll read the time of this chart uh, exactly. Okay, uh, let me do times first. Uh, MetaTrader is 1, 5, 15, and 30. I've been going back and forth. I tried to show you some swing trades early on with the 1 hour and the 30. Um, I find this most helpful to me as I'm, as I'm scalping and trading during the day down in the 5 and 1, especially for pairs like Euro Odd. The Asian pairs compared to the European pairs are very, very hot like high octane. Another one that is very high octane that I would definitely use a five or a one would be pound New Zealand. Um, and uh, we combine uh, New Zealand really is interesting as a different animal from the Australian dollar even though they're in the same region. Uh, the New Zealand uh, Kiwi is more, much more dependent upon an agricultural economy and uh, with that one you can definitely trade off the milk price, kind of global milk price indicator that comes out once a week and uh, as uh, the price of milk goes, so goes the uh, New Zealand economy. Obviously a bigger impact on Australia is a bigger economy in general with commodities 
And uh, uh, another one that I was going to bring up earlier and we'll bring up later is uh, U.S. Canadian. Uh, the Canadian economy is very much dependent upon uh, energy, the energy sector, and as the price of oil has come down, I'll show you in a second uh, the difference between those two things. The price of oil has come down, uh, so has uh, the dollar risen against the Canadian dollar over the last year and a half. Okay, just a couple more uh, quick ones. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Another one you can compare, Australia, New Zealand. We've spent a lot of time on this simply because Look at the volatility on some of these Chinese announcements, amazing. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this, uh, and you can see it's pretty choppy, the Australian versus the New Zealand. Sometimes, for example, if New Zealand raises their or lowers their interest rate before Australia, uh, you'll get a big differentiator and a big move one way or another. It's much like Euro and GBP, Euro against the Great British Pound. Sometimes they're tightly coupled. Other times uh, one is ranging ahead of the other, but that's another way to look at it. Here's a perfect uh, additional example. We had our moves here, so just to show you how I would play it, from the high of the move to the low of the move, back up here into the 618, the drop down to zero. Now we're still trying our best to see what's going to happen next. This is a one minute chart, remember, so it's it's very jumpy, but it's possible you can, you can uh, fool around with something of that sort and still use your fibs. Uh, and if we were to add now our Forex Fortune Hunter template, we'd get a little better indication <clears throat> from some of our other measures of what's happening next. Now notice here, our multiple moving averages are helping us note that there is, and, and our other oscillators are helping us note there's less momentum to the downside here, much less momentum to the downside here, and as a result, this low looks like about all she wrote on this particular move, and in fact, now, what you would do is to think through the following, high to low, and I would want to see, here's my 618, obviously, Okay, let's see if I've got this exact. This is, needs to be precise. In any event, uh, if we can take out this chandelier to the upside, our target would then be back up here at the highs. So this is one of those areas where I'm talking about a tipping point, right? We don't know right now whether it's going to drop dramatically and you know, go back down and retest the lows of this economic announcement or some kind of global political announcement. We don't know if it's going to re-rally and, and say, well, that wasn't such bad news after all. I'm going to go back and test my 127. And by squeezing this a little bit, we can also see where our 1618 is. And on the odd New Zealand, uh, if we were to take that out and move here, that would be 13 pips. And if we were to take it down to the downside, that would be, you know, 10, 11, 12, 14 down to the 200. And so, <clears throat> once again, odd New Zealand is a pair that probably isn't moving quite as much or uh, with as much volatility as some of the others. Like, as I said, the pound New Zealand, the pound odd would be another one. Here was one I had on my charts from last night as I was watching. <clears throat> uh, we had our line in the sand here. I had drawn an A to B suggestion. We came up and we tried to test up to the 1618, but here was my trade, pull back into the bands, and then off we went to the races. I happened to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Why in God's name I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. I don't usually trade London, but that was a pretty nice move, actually. And just to show you the difference in volatility, that's a 64 pip move still on a one minute chart using these more volatile pairs, so you need to be a little careful. Okay, now I, I would like to just switch gears. We have, uh, I, I'm not going to be making any offers to you. I want to talk about questions. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the situation is I would like to test two things. I'm going to quickly check US CAD, all right? I want to show you that the U.S. CAD is one that if you are a currency trader and you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and you're in the United States, it's very easy to test the U.S. CAD in the U.S. market. Now, this is a 15-minute chart. Here was our Asian session. This is 5 o'clock last night. We're in the U.S. session. And now we can see that we have already one of the situations that we raised on, on our uh, discussion. 
we had a down move, an A to B move right here. All right, there we went. We pull back into the bands, but look what happened. Even though we had our medallion here and even though we were here, now on a 15-minute chart we've reversed and we've already come back up and tested this particular uh, zero mark, or 100 mark, where we began our A to B decline. All right. So what we'd be looking for now, whenever we take out a chandelier, we want to see a couple or three different things, and we'll drop down to a five minute in just a second and see if that works. But if you're if you're swing trading on 15 minute, you want to wait until you see that next medallion appear. You do not you, you see just barely getting over here into the into the range, okay? It's conceivable that we've gone all the way to the top and now we're going to reverse and go downward. However, uh, we're also overbought now, so we definitely are thinking we want to see a pullback before we get involved in any entry. And that's how we'd use our oscillators to help us. How are we doing? Well, it's come down to here and it's testing it. But because our chandelier has been taken out, I would be more of a vote that maybe we're going to go and test the upside with the dollar strengthening against the CAD. And that opens up the opportunity that I was hoping for. And I'm going to share a different chart with you while that's what making up its mind. Okay, I'm going to go to my trade station charts, and I'm going to show you that we now have uh, CL on the line. This is the uh, 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 crude oil E-mini uh, trade. And the first thing I like to tell you is that when you're trading E-minis, uh, forget about fibs for right now, but take a look. And this is uh, this is I've got to log into my other account. Sorry, hang on. I turned it off so it wouldn't take up a lot of bandwidth while we were talking. I'm going to move to a simulated account, and we'll see what's happened to our uh, oil market during the morning. It'll take just a minute to refresh here. Hang on one second. I hope you will notice that I'm using exactly the same kinds of indicators. Uh, save the chandelier on my uh, trade station e-mini futures and uh, and uh, forex uh, trading as I would over in MetaTrader. <clears throat> okay, so here here we go. This is a four-minute CL chart. Uh, unlike uh, MetaTrader, which goes with some bizarre server in Bulgaria, so it's showing me times that are not only on a 24-hour uh, military clock, but also seven hours ahead of me. This is actually normal time. So here was our 9.30 hour. This is when the market opened this morning, 9, 9.30. We peaked up here, way back up here around 46. And then we dropped down dramatically, down into the 45 range, 45.04. So it was about a buck 30 in terms of this range of moves. Okay? Now, if we were to... I'm not, I'm not going to fuss with fibs right now. I'm, I want to show you that if you can take the template, this would be our T3 indicator. Still set, uh, this one's set to a 24, but we could set it easily to a 38. I switch back and forth. Sorry for the confusion. Same thing here. Notice what happens. Even though we don't have our chandelier, we could, in fact, insert a PSAR if we wanted to have more uh, indication of what's happening. An indicator, I think it's down here. Let's see what it is. It is parabolic SAR. <clears throat> so I said I don't use it as much. <clears throat> Set to that. I'll leave it at that. Where did it go? I didn't say click OK. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm, hur I'm hurrying a bit. Just take a deep breath and get it on here for you. Uh, color and style. Let's make it bigger. There it is. Okay, so notice that what we had here on parabolic SAR was the same thing. We had a switch to the upside, okay, and so we would draw our line right here. Oops, wrong, wrong lines, Tom. Come on, come on, let's get rid of it. I'll just leave it there for now. We may find some use for it. There was our cross. The yellow dot is the same as a medallion in MetaTrader. Cross of the 24 and the T3, pull back into the bands. It took out the parabolic SAR, but now we came back and took it out again and look at the same thing. So our template is really, uh, really looking, uh, looking like it, it, it holds up under these circumstances. The pink, and I'm sorry, the pink and yellow 
to get back to it would represent <clears throat> these medallions here. So this is a blue down, this is a white up, and over on the other uh, trade station chart, <clears throat> I'm using a different uh, indicator. I could change them to match. I, I just didn't happen to on the CL trade. Okay, so to, as a kind of final point, because I'm running out of time, it's, it's 10:26. I got a couple more minutes left. I wanted to show you that when we take a look at this combined with our CL trade, notice what happened: the dollar declines as the price of oil increased up past 46, right? And as it came back down again, we reversed direction. And that shows the impact of the uh, of the market uh, relative to the economic indicators that we also like to try to use our fundamentals. And I would suggest if we drop down to a five minute chart, we'd be in a situation where that's one of the ones that just happened. Here would be our indicator down. We went through a chandelier and back up to the 100 percent. We're waiting on a five-minute chart for our medallion. We've got our medallion C, and we've taken out our chandelier. So all we're waiting for now is this cross over here to the north. And at that point, we could put on our yellow line, right? We look for our pullback, and then we would expect maybe a shot to the 1618. Okay, that's 1027. Put a fork in me. I'm done for now. Um, I would like to ask if there are any further questions. I'd be happy to try my best to answer them in a couple of minutes. But uh, meanwhile, I uh, want to say again, I really appreciate your participation. And I hope my observations about FIBS and, and all of that uh, will be helpful to you in your trading. I wanted to get back to our PowerPoint slides here just to see what's happening and to uh, see where we are. So I can conclude sort of gracefully in any event. <clears throat> Let's see where we are here with our significant stuff. That's 16. Hang on one second. So we did nothing much. We saw all those trades happening. Uh, we saw the opportunities, some of them in the live market. We talked a little bit about economics. And the final thoughts. Lower time frames seem to be most helpful. So if you're scalping to swing trading, that's where I think your fibs can be of most use. When price reaches a fib extension, accept your your bounty and move on. Don't don't try to be greedy and take more than is there. Just go back, check another pair. Go have a cup of coffee. See how it develops from that point, especially if you're in the middle of the bands. Beware of fundamental announcements. If you're if you're going to trade them, trade them because you have a view of what's happening with the economics, not because of Fibonacci's. Be prepared for 200% when the move is on fire, and be prepared for 1.27 extensions on your reversals. So, thanks for attending. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to hearing from you guys in the future. And thanks again for your time today.